Man, let's unwind. Forget about this. Relax. Hey, does he... Now, does he beat people? Has, um, he, beat has he ever beat SC? Has, has he, like, have you, have you you've got... I've known Tommy 10 years, and I've never Come seen on. him actually have to beat somebody down. You've so never had to... Right. You've never had to throw somebody into a wall? No, no, We're talking no, no. about Nick Lachey's security he, guy. Come on in here. Tommy Lee is his name, not to be confused with the guy who does home movies. Um, now, your job is to what? Be Nick's body man? Protect him? Do whatever he needs? Get him water? He's my beat, pers he's a personal chef. Beat the crap out of bitches? Not yeah. bitches, literally, but you know what I mean? Got to be careful about saying these things, <laughs> especially now. So you've never had to throw anybody out of his suite? No, a couple people out of hotels, that's it. Now, today, you had an event earlier for another station. And you come here, and you see a chick who was at the event earlier. Right. Does that make your psycho radar go off? No, we know her. we've known her for several years, so. Really? Yeah. So, so she's just living the dream. Well, there's, yeah, there's certain people that you, you kind of, every time you put out an album, you, you see, uh, you know, familiar faces. Yeah. Which is, you know, always good. Your fans stick with you and, and come out and support you again. But uh, I think there were a couple, actually, a couple of girls that were at both events today. Wow. So. Well, you know what? That's got to feel good for you. Ten years of him protecting your back and taking care of things for you. Because you've seen a lot. Oh, yeah. Did you have to sign the confidentiality clause? Oh, for sure. Good. Because you need to keep his back. <laughs> for God knows the things for you've lifetime. seen. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you. TMZ out front. They're going to come in. <laughs> Ten grand. He and I, we don't even need a contract. <laughs> <laughs> see? But see, that's cool that y'all have that kind of a relationship. Yeah. And I think it's even cooler, though, talking about these fans who are literally, you've got people who are following you around, you know? But the one thing that I think has got to be great for you right now, by the way, this is Nick Lachey. See how we do things? We just jump into it. Start talking. <laughs> Nick Lachey is here. He's got new stuff coming out. And uh, life has got to be a lot more calm for you now. You know, normally when you see you, there's about 15 to 20 people with cameras running around. This is five years ago, Nick Lachey. Cameras everywhere, people following you around, your life's on a reality show, and now you can actually go to the bathroom in peace. Although I will say that it, it got crazier in, in D.C. here than it's been in a long time. I don't know why. I didn't know there was such a paparazzi presence in D.C., but we had, we had trailed all the way up to Georgetown, all the way back, <laughs> you know, video camera the whole time, you know, 50,000 questions, followed us into CBS, buying NyQuil, you know, <laughs> like, it's crazy. I'm sick. I'm not baking anything. I don't need ephedrine products. No, yeah, it's like, just, guys, I got what's, a the, what's the night cool for? I mean, what's <laughs> the night cool for for anybody? What do you think? <laughs> Hello. You know, it's crazy. I was in L.A. and I went and bought. I had to, I, you know, I got, you get that stuff when you travel. You fly oh, yeah. and you got to, like, knock it out. And everybody's so afraid of those products now that they keep the ephedrine stuff behind the counter. Like, I went to buy that. And I'm from out of state. So they're like, we need your driver's license. Okay. Like, I got full oh, yeah. registered for buying some freaking Sudafed. I'm you're, like... You're lucky you didn't put on a waiting list. You know, like, <laughs> like, what's like going hand, on? Like a dude? handgun. It's a three-day waiting period. And it's just <laughs> oh, God. I just have a cold. <laughs> Please. But life, you know, that's interesting, man. I mean, like, have you noticed that it's more calm now? It, you know, it, it fluctuates. It, it depends yeah. on what's going on. And you can tell when there may be a little controversy in the press or there's something that, you know, someone's sniffing around about because then you see the paparazzi presence, right. you know, increase. And, and uh... But it's yeah, it has slowed down a little bit, which is nice. You know, it's nice to be able to leave your house and not get followed for the day, and uh, you know, it, it makes life a little uh, a little more laid back. You can actually kind of do your own thing and, and not get not get hassled by uh, by paparazzi and video cameras and all that. I just don't know how you do it. You know, I mean, or I don't know how you did it, and I don't know how you you deal with it even now because. You know, I mean, I mean, we've seen a lot of stories, a lot of stories here recently. Well, it's, I mean, you it's, know. you know, it's one of those things where it's part of, uh, I guess, it's changed so much from when I first started in, in this business. You know, now you've got such a bigger, you know, it's become a bigger deal, the tabloids and the paparazzi, and now you've got the, uh, you know, the online stuff and the television shows. And uh, so you, you think, oh, you know, eventually people are going to get sick of it, but there seems to be this insatiable appetite for, you know, as much footage as they can get. Right. Um, so, you know, as I think you just have to kind of tell yourself or remind yourself that, you know, this is, this is kind of part of the deal and there's nothing you can do about it. Just, you know, live your life and, and, uh, and, 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 you know, answer to yourself at the end of the day. That's all you can do. So what you're saying then is that you miss the days of Tiger Beat back when you were in 98 Degrees. You know what? I mean, there's something to be said for those days. You know, I mean, I mean where are the Tiger Beats and the J-14s? And I know. The, and the pop stars and the, you know, teen beats and all. I mean, 
uh, team people went out of business for Pete's sake. You know, I know. It's like, it's like a you know the whole the whole uh, landscape has changed, and it's all it's all online now. It's all blogs and celebrity bloggers and all this you know all this new stuff. So and not not much of it is is based in fact. I mean, it's like at least with those magazines and those newspapers back in the day, like when you start when you yeah. got your start, oh, yeah. and even when you were you know doing the other thing, and then now, at least you knew there was a degree of ethics. Well, yeah, I mean, at least you know you actually got to ask the question, you know, right? And, and got to answer that. That's you know, that's an interview. But yeah, I mean, you know, that's and that's what I always try to remind people is there's so much of this that you read online that is that is uh, you know, it's it's speculation. It's just one one person's theory or one person's opinion or one person's take, and you always have to take that with a grain of salt. You know, I, I, I can see how it's addictive for people, right? Uh, and so on and so forth. But just always, you know, kind of in the back of your mind, know that you know there there has to be a you know there has to be a little bit of uh, give and take with that stuff. You can't, you can't just take it at face value and, and believe everything you hear. So when you watch this Chris Brown and Rihanna stuff, is any of that sort of like, oh my God, shock and sensational stuff? Is that eerily familiar to you? Like, can you kind of relate to that? Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, look, it's it's an unfortunate incident no matter how it comes out. Right. But none of us in this room, none of us know what really happened. And, and in the meantime, everyone's speculating and creating their own opinions and crucifying people. And I mean, you've heard 15 different theories on what... It's just... Until until you hear from the actual people, you're never going to know, yeah. and uh, and so anything before then is just speculation, you know. And and people deserve the the chance to, you know, kind of be innocent until proven guilty, so to speak. Sure. I mean, who knows what happens? So, uh, you know, until we hear from either one of them or both of them, I think you know we all have to reserve judgment. And take it from somebody who knows, right? I mean, over the weekend you were in the you know the Bahamas with uh, with your significant other, and y'all had a huge fight. Oh yeah, and it was documented. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these pictures are going to be out online, and, and we all know that there was some shadiness, and she threw a lamp at you. A lamp. And you were you were. It was very... actually, a, it was actually a, a log on fire. And you were, see, a burning <laughs> log. A burning log she from threw the fireplace. This, and the reason she was upset with you is because she caught you looking at a Vogue magazine. Yeah. Vogue, for Christ's sake. I Vogue. Vogue. Vogue fetish. I did... <laughs> they were out of Cosmo at the hotel. Do you so see, I, I mean, and this, is, and this is why these things, I, it just is nuts. But I hope that y'all will repair the, the relationship. I, I think that the plastic surgery you had this morning... Looks great. I mean, Which they, I, I mean, I can't believe I'm it. walking as well. For I, I know. I thought. Well, I, well, that's what I heard is when she took the burning log and smacked both of your kneecaps, and then she hired Hulk Hogan to lay the smack I'm down just, on you I'm while you glad, were in the Bahamas. I'm just glad kneecaps is the term that came out. I mean, it was, I just, it was brutal. I'm very, you know, I'm very concerned. Try to write a lot of romantic fire, celebrate Valentine's Day, and get a log thrown at you. I what are you see. Do? I know, man. Just. God. By it's the way, this world we live in—you have to—you can't be too careful. By the way, you'll read all about it today at TMZ and at Perez and at every other blog site. <laughs> dot com bs. Dot, dot forward slash my ass. I mean, it just really—you know—I I, I feel for you guys in a way. It's you know? you know what it is though, but you can't. And I never have tried to 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 you know uh, appeal to people's sympathy out there. I mean, you sure. know, we're, we're we're all blessed. Those of us right. who have an opportunity to do this for for a living, we're blessed. And, and, you know, as I said, the, the landscape changed from five years ago. It's going to change in, in another five years. Sure. Uh, but no matter where it goes, you have to really always remind yourself that, you know, we're, we're blessed to be in this position. And, and quite honestly, you have to almost look at it as a, as a, you know, a form of flattery. If people are yeah. interested, that means that, you know, you that mean, it means you're right. still doing something right. You know, right. it's when people, uh, you know, couldn't give a crap and, and quit talking about you. That's when you got to worry. So uh, if you look at it that way and, and try and remind yourself of that, uh, you can stay somewhat sane. Well, next time I take a picture of you at Reagan National Airport using the men's room, but noticing that you're using a stall and not the urinal, and I sell it for ten grand, I will remind you that you're rich, bitch. You're rich. So I, let me take I, this All picture. I ask is a simple 20% cut, and we can, uh, you know, we can set up the whole thing. Sounds like a plan. Now, let's talk about the music. <laughs> You've got a new song. It's called Patience. What went into this for you when you were in the studio? Obviously, it was written by somebody else, and you yeah. came to you, and you were like, Whoo! Well, this is a song I actually heard when I was I was doing promotions in uh, in the UK uh, right. two years ago or something, and uh, and take that a group that's huge really throughout the rest of the world, but not really known here. Right. Um, they were a boy band from the '90s. They just did a reunion album, and this was their big comeback single. So I heard the song and just I, I loved the song. I thought it was a beautifully written song. I thought I could definitely relate to the song. Um, and it was it was the kind of song I could kind of put my own take on. Um, so I decided to cover it and ended up being the first single. Wow. And then let's talk about the song, the second song that you just played. Is that going to be a single or anything? The his, the thing one? Well, set that one up. Tell me the, the, the second song you played today yeah. was called? Uh, it was called Good and Goodbye. Well, now. Uh, you know, and, and, and of course, everyone's going to, you know. Assume. Uh, take their take their uh, opinions and, Wikipedia and look back to, 
But no, what it is is really, it's, you know, I think out of every bad situation, there you have to look for a silver lining, and that's right. you know, there's there's a good and goodbye. You know, sometimes things are are meant, you know, whether it's a marriage or a relationship or whatever. Uh, you have to look for the good and goodbye, and, uh, and it's kind of a fun song. It's not meant to be, you know, malicious in any way. It's it's, right. it's meant to be uh, fun, <laughs> happy, upbeat, upbeat, auditory Paxil. <laughs> Let's pop a few. Nick, thank you for talking to us. I cannot wait uh, for the 98 Degrees reunion. I know that you and uh, that's one of the reasons for the fight you had in the Bahamas with Vanessa. She didn't want you to go out on the road with all those now much older fans who still are hot and have been augmented cosmetically. Well, we just thought we just thought if we're going to do a reunion record, we should do classical music. Uh, so we're going to do the first a cappella classical you know, music album, and we think it's going to be a big hit, especially I mean, here at Hot 99.5. Now, it's, don't right, you, it's right in your guys' playlist. Isn't right? it true that there will be an a cappella classical cover of your own song known as Invisible Man? Uh, actually, actually, Beethoven is going to come back from the dead and cover our song, <laughs> and we're going to cover Beethoven stuff for our album. It's, it's, it's never been done before. I mean, it's almost like Natalie Nat King Cole-ish. God. Yeah, the seance alone must have been the costs it's on that must have brutal. been through the roof. I mean, can you understand how hard it is to record somebody that's been dead for thousands of years? I, I, I mean, uh, and getting the Pope to agree to do this for yeah. you was yeah. tremendous. I mean, God, I, you know, the Pope's it's not like he's not busy. You know, for him to be like, I will gift up a Beethoven for you. And not only that, but the fact that we were able to actually find a recording studio in Gaza and record it there. I mean, the whole thing was just uh, uh, You know, and I, I thought it was great, too, that because you guys were embarking on this groundbreaking project, and this is something TMZ and Perez haven't heard about, you know, you, you actually brokered peace between Israel and Gaza so that you could record this project. Music does that. I mean, and, when and, you, once you hear 90 Degrees singing classical music, how can anyone be at war in those times? And so, isn't it true that you got the uh, people in Gaza and the people and the militants and the Israelis to understand that, in fact, the Invisible Man was not the ghost of Beethoven, but the Invisible Man was the ghost of um, Christmas past? Well, actually, the Invisible Man is, is Bin Laden, which is why we're now under military contract to go and sing throughout Afghanistan to broker peace in that region as well. Now, isn't that the cover story, though? Because I thought that the CIA had contracted 98 Degrees in their secretly reformed state to go to Afghanistan and sing Invisible Man nonstop until you forced him out of his caves and finished the job that Bush said he was going to finish, which he didn't finish, and obviously we know how that went down. If, if anything will torture the Taliban into surrender, it would be a nonstop rendition mm -hmm. of it, uh, Invisible Man. Baby, to the Taliban, all I am is an invisible man. Nick Lachey, <laughs> globetrotter, world peace bringer. You are a statesman for our time. Thank you, sir. The Associated Press today. just called. They, they want the scoop. They well, I, I think the CIA is probably upset that we, <laughs> we spilt some plans. NSA is going to be in here in a minute, too, so we better run. Nick Lachey. That actually is out of control. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, good. Well, I don't know, man. I mean, like, how far have we come in two years? I remember the first time we talked, I was just like rapid fire. Screw Joe Simpson. Screw Joe Simpson. Preach a Joe. Preach a Joe. You know? And it's like, and now here we are talking about the fact that he's bringing world peace. I think my favorite question off the last interview was when you asked him, what was the worst radio interview you've ever done? <laughs> and he, and he goes, said, well, give this... me a couple more minutes. And was... <laughs> I thought it was great, dude. Was... So let me get back to you. No, I don't, I don't know, man. I just, you know, I... I you know, that's, uh, talking about the paparazzi thing, and, and this is this is Darren's going to be like, here he goes again. But like, you know, we were with Matt Nathanson the other day. And uh, Matt and I, basically that whole last exchange we just had, Matt and I did the same sort of a thing, but we did it as if I was every other person in radio doing an interview with Matt Nathanson. And Matt's like, no, it starts like this. So, you got the song, huh? <laughs> wow, that's great. So you've been keeping busy. And what's in your iPod? <laughs> oh, really? So patience, man. That's about uh, being patient. <laughs> wow, what went into that. Hmm. <laughs> now, I don't want to talk about the X because it's Nick Lachey and everything. And I don't want to talk too much about Vanessa, but, you know, let's talk about Vanessa and the X. Yeah, I, I have to do it. i got to do my job. All right. Nick Lachey is here, everybody. That's great. I mean, and that's kind of how it goes. But you get the, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to be rude, but... Yeah. Right, I don't, don't want to be out of line, but... but like, uh, well, why are you asking it? Here it goes. I mean, like, are we really there? <laughs> that was five years ago, okay? She's moved on. He's moved on. Life's on. I'm mean, just like, it, why? You know? Why? I don't know. It's a good question. Just You're friends. <clears throat> well, what am I going to do? They think that they're being clever. I mean, you know, well, what, seriously, what do you do? You th They think they're being clever. I don't want to be rude. But about your niece... 
Shit. You're asking me about my niece and not my ex or my current or my what could be or am I pregnant? You know, it's just, it's a, you know I, I just don't get it sometimes. Man. My pregnancy is one of the best kept secrets. Now, I've how did this happen, <laughs> this immaculate conception for you? Like, Now, isn't it true Vanessa came to you and said, I need you to carry our child? Uh, very true, and I willingly agreed. And you said so I don't want I don't want to mess up her figure, so I agreed to Absolutely to, no, to, so already, <laughs> to do with my already flawed figure. Right? Well, so what you did was you had an experimental surgery performed. This is very this is groundbreaking news, it's an exclusive. Nick Lachey in Sweden has in went to Sweden <laughs> with Vanessa to have her womb I'm implanted in into his in Sweden. Sweden, there. Sweden into his guttural region beneath his washboard abs. And now he is pregnant. He is two and a half weeks along. Um, you know, normal medical science wouldn't even have detected this, but you, isn't it true? You, well, we're still not out of the, out of the, you know, out of the dark, dark, a little bit touch and go, so I haven't told too many people, you know. Now, what are you craving the in. most? Are you craving peanut butter? Because, you know, that's, that's polluted, spoiled stuff now. You can't, salmonella and shit, you gotta be careful. Oh, we can't have peanut butter. Well, just be careful. Pregnancy's off. <sighs> <laughs> Stone. And there it went. Uh, we had breaking news. Nick Lachey's pregnant, I, I carrying a child, and now it's over. That changes everything. Ah, man. Uh, anyway. 